Stop motion animation has been a part of movies from the very beginning. In 1933, Willis O'Brien shocked the world with King Kong. Ray Harryhausen entertained audiences for decades with his monsters and myths. Rankin and Bass gave us cherished Christmas memories, and Tim Burton turned them into nightmares. Even in the 21st century, when CGI dominates animation and special effects, stop-motion work continues to enthrall the imaginations of children and adults. Today, I want to look at an artist who made some of the earliest narrative stop-motion films and discuss his... unusual techniques. This is 100-Year-Old Movies. Ladislav Sterovich was a Polish-Russian filmmaker known for his stop-motion animated films. In 1910, as the director of the Museum of Natural History in Kanaas, Lithuania, he began making short film documentaries. While trying to film stag beetles, he ran into a little problem of them dying due to the stage lighting. Remembering a French film by Arthur Melbourne Cooper in which stop motion was used to animate figures made from matchsticks, Sterovich replaced the dead insect's legs with wires and used the technique to make a minute-long film of the beetles fighting. Starovic then moved to Moscow to work for a film company. There he continued making films using stop motion with dead bugs and taxidermied frogs. I will be discussing two of these short films from 1912. In the beautiful Akinita, the bugs enact a kind of costume drama in which a romantic rivalry comically escalates into a full-scale war. Of course, the novelty here is to see the bugs act like people. We see the shadows of bugs dancing in the background of the first scene. We see guard bugs armed with halberds falling asleep on duty. The romantic rivals duel with swords. The roaches escape by taking a dive. I'm impressed by the bit of camera movement in this scene. The beetle tries to give chase but is caught up by his own belt. War is declared. The beetle army fires cannons from their camp. The roaches fire back from their castle. As beetles storm the battlements, I love the detail of the drummer off to the side. The level of thoughtful direction that Starvik puts into his work is what makes it exciting and entertaining. The beetle army looks like it's going to win, but the roaches won't be taken alive. It ends with a bang. Next up, we have the cameraman's revenge. If seeing insects fight with swords was odd, it's possibly even stranger to see them in the context of modern life. Here's a film about an insect making a film. And while the previous film had a romantic triangle, here's a tale of jealousy, infidelity, and revenge. These bugs carry suitcases and drive cars. They dine at tables while a frog dances on the stage for them. A dragonfly is the main attraction and clearly characterizes an attractive woman, to bugs anyway. The cameraman, a grasshopper on a bicycle, shows up outside the nightclub and secretly films the couple leaving. His motives seem voyeuristic. He watches through a keyhole as the couple becomes intimate on a sofa. Yeah, it's a bit weird that Starovic animated dead bugs making out. The grasshopper sets up to film them in the act secretly, but is found out. We then see the grasshopper painting in his studio. Again, the level of thought and creativity that went into this is astounding. There really wasn't a precedent for doing this in animation. Sterovic had to invent ways of doing things in stop motion that imitated characters and scenes in live action films. He was really good at having the bugs act like humans too. Without facial features, he gives them gestures and expressive body movements that read as human behavior. 
The animation gives them character. The grasshopper brings his paintings to the beetle's wife. And they become intimate. The beetle returns home to confront them. The grasshopper tries to escape, but is caught and must fight. The grasshopper shows his film to an audience of other bugs. The beetle is in attendance. In outrage, he destroys the screen and assaults the grasshopper in the projection booth. These fun little films showcase the inventive talent of Starovic. They're also examples of enduring film techniques from the earliest days of the medium. In fact, they feel ahead of their time. Starovic made many more films working in live action and sometimes mixing live action and stop motion. Following the Bolshevik Revolution and World War I, Starovic fled to Paris, France, where he continued his work. Between 1929 and 30, he made a feature-length stop-motion film. Titled, in English, The Tale of the Fox or The Story of the Fox, a post-production process of adding sound and finding more funding delayed its release until 1937. It came out two months before Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Anyone looking at this today will notice its resemblance to The Fantastic Mr. Fox, the 2009 film by Wes Anderson. Starovic's film is an acknowledged inspiration for Anderson's film. In 1933, Starovic began a series of films featuring an animated stuffed animal dog called Fetiche. The first of these, known as The Mascot, has a nightmare scene that might remind viewers of films like Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas and The Corpse Bride. Animator and film director Terry Gilliam says that the mascot is one of the best animated films ever made. Starovic was still working on animated movies when he passed away in 1965. It's said that he kept every one of his puppets. His work is now in the care of his granddaughter, who oversees restoration and DVD releases of his films. I've always been more affected by stop motion than other forms of animation. Visually, you have real objects in a real space, sometimes interacting with live action. It feels like it could exist because it does exist, even though it doesn't move naturally or look as convincing as CGI. It doesn't need to. It's real, and that beats everything. When I was in high school, I even made my own little stop motion video with clay figures. The name of my channel is actually a reference to the Cyclops animated by Ray Harryhausen from the movie The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. I always get a sense of the artist when I'm watching stop motion, as if through their hands they imbue part of their personality into the model. I feel this whether it's Willis O'Brien, Ray Harryhausen, Art Clokey, Phil Tippett, or Henry Selleck. It holds true for Ladislav Starovic as well. It takes a powerful imagination to give not just movement, but life and soul to an inanimate object. I'm Movie Cyclops. Thank you for watching this video and supporting my endless fascination with movie history.